All right, so this question says uh, light rays for normally, oh, <laughs> that is perpendicular. <laughs> so the instant light uh, that's supposed to be perpendicular here <laughs> on the vertical surface of a glass prism shown below. And uh, this whole perspective view, I think that messes me up in terms of trying to figure out the geometry. So let me draw the front view that doesn't suffer from the perspective effect. So we did this front view, I have a light ray that is incident perpendicularly to this face. So, so here it's not gonna refract at all, it'll just go straight. And then at this angle, it'll, um, so no, usually <laughs> it'll refract in uh, out and it'll reflect um, inside, inside. So that's uh, usually what will happen. But for this particular question, we are looking for uh, condition. So what is the largest value for phi such that the ray is totally reflected at the slanted face? So, so we are looking for a very particular scenario um, where I have this angle phi and um, there is uh, some critical angle at which it so happens that there's nothing refracted through and everything is reflected. And I think as you are reading the question and um, make, uh, trying to make sure you understand what it's saying, I think it's good to make a sense of uh, what the question is saying. For example, it's uh, asking for what is the largest value for phi. So when you, so, I think from the wording of that, what it suggests to me is that the critical angle that I'm thinking of, it's the, let's see. Um, so I, I guess, <laughs> sorry, I'm having trouble finding the words. So let me try to draw it. So let's say uh, whatever the angle fee that it's describing, this is one scenario where the light is coming in and it's a, uh, uh, not quite refracted, but it's reflected. And that's a scenario one. And um, you can think of two different scenarios. One where the angle is larger. So let's say you have phi that's much larger, something like even close to 90 degrees. Imagine what would happen in that case. And imagine what would happen when the angle is even smaller than the critical angle. Then I hope you might have some intuition here that um, that the angle that's uh, like this one. So let me try to draw the surface normal. So so this is my attempt at drawing the surface normal um, for a light that's incident like uh, above, where the angle phi is larger than the largest angle that we are looking for. If it looks like the light ray might usually refract through, then um, then I, I think that's uh, right. Uh, that that's what should expect to happen when you have angle of incidence that's pretty close to the normal incidence. And looking at this other picture, which is uh, smaller than the largest uh, such phi, then as you are looking at this picture, I hope you have some intuition from having read, read the textbook, having watched the lectures, that when you have such a shallow angle of incidence, that something special is happening and everything here gets reflected instead of being able to refract it through. And so that's one part of making sense of this largest value for phi, because we are saying when it's a smaller than the phi that we will find, then the thing that we are looking for, the total internal reflection, is gonna happen, yeah. So there's more than one angle where this total internal reflection happens. If we consider an angle that's even larger than that, then total internal reflection doesn't happen. So, so there's something special about this particular angle phi that we are going to find. And uh, remembering this is what will help you, frankly, not have to remember a bunch of uh, formulas. Because I think I say this in one of the lectures, you know, um, for something like a total internal reflection, I actually don't have the formula for those critical angles memorized. What I remember 
is that these critical angles, there's a special condition that this satisfies. In particular, at this critical angle where this total internal reflection just barely begins to happen, the refraction, actually there's a, something that kind of looks like refraction. And if the refraction were to happen, the refracted ray would go right along the surface of the uh, surface of the, the boundary. They call it evanescent wave and it actually doesn't propagate that far. So conservation of energy says that everything has to be reflected. But that's the condition for the uh, condition for the total internal reflection. And remembering that actually gives you a quick way to, whenever you need to, redrive the formula for that critical angle. So if the if this is the critical angle of incidence, then the outgoing angle for the refracted ray must be 90 degrees. So remembering that and using Snell's law lets you set up this expression that um, the the index of refraction of the glass inside uh, the, this side of the boundary and this side is air. So index of refraction of glass times the sine of critical angle is equal to index of refraction of outside uh, medium times the sine of 90 degrees or one. So, um, so this uh, lets you quickly solve for the the critical angle, which would be arc sine of one over index of refraction of glass. And here it's important not to say that it's a theta critical here, because that's not the case. You have to work out the geometry. So if this is your theta critical, then uh, looking at here, okay, I think I see two parallel lines. This line here, should be parallel to this line here. They are both horizontal, which means this angle here should be congruent to, to phi. This angle, which is now phi, plus the theta critical is 90 degrees. So phi must be, okay, I think I can write down what phi is now. It must be 90 degrees minus the theta critical angle that I worked out from this expression here. Okay, and um, oh, the repeat the calculation. If uh, um, part, if the prism is immersed in water, that's an easy, uh, easy fix. I have where I have one here. I would just say, okay, that's now index of refraction of water instead of index of refraction of air. So uh, just writing out the whole thing, it should now be ninety degrees minus. Uh, let me just write out the new expression for theta critical. It would be arc sine of index of refraction of water over index of refraction of glass. Um, and uh, you should find that uh, this angle phi is, is much uh, shallower when it's in water because these two indices of refraction are um, are closer to each other. So this arc sine of the thing, it's uh, so it's an arc sine of the thing is closer to the 90 degree angle, meaning um, the the angle of incidence has to be more of a grazing angle. So yeah, so when you do 90 degree minus something that's closer to 90 degrees, then you get a shallower angle. And, uh, and if uh, in a scenario, so, you know, here index of refraction of water is 1.33 in a scenario where this material has index or refraction less than this, you should find that um, you get a no answer here. That's when, you know, uh, total internal reflection only happens when light passes from uh, material that has low, uh, larger <laughs> index of refraction to a smaller index of refraction. It only happens in that direction.